This church is loud. And, and why do preachers always scream? Because we're trying to get the unbelieving to hear. We're trying to wake 
the sleepy. We're trying to get the apathetic to get off of their keister and do something for the kingdom of God. I've been yelling about Jesus for 20 years. And I'm not going to stop. And I'm telling you this. You get a church full of people who aren't afraid of what other people think about them. Who aren't concerned with what image they may portray to people who don't know. I'm telling you, portray the image of God. I'm telling you, walk with Jesus. Don't be moved by people's opinion and live for the Lord. Amen. I said amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Not amen and a woman. Amen. Nothing against women. Amen and amen. I'm telling you this. If you think the persecution and the rhetoric is bad now, you better get a clue as to the world we live in. For there will be wars, there will be rumors of wars, there will be plagues in many nations, nation will rise against nation, kingdom will rise against kingdom, you'll be dragged into court because you serve God, you'll be accused of wrongdoing, you'll be sold out by friends, you'll be lied on, all because you serve, persecution has yet to begin in this nation and if you think it won't happen in America you must think Jesus is a liar you better know who your God is it's time in fact it's past time for the body of Christ to really be serious And to not take no for an answer. It's time to believe God. It's time to really get in His Word. It's not time for you to just show up when it's convenient. It's not time for you to not show up when they say there's a sickness in the earth. I'm going to clue you in on something. There's been sickness in the earth since Adam and Eve blew it in the garden. And it's not going away. But you've been given authority and you've been given power. You say, well, I know people who have died. Yeah, so do I. So do I. And it doesn't change the power of God. I'm not going to hide in a hole somewhere because an unbelieving world tells me I have to. Oh, don't go out in the street. There's crime in the street. Yeah, well, get a gun. Pack a weapon. You shouldn't say that in church. No, I am saying in church. And I say it when I'm not in church. Come try to take my car from me while I'm driving it. Come break my window out and try to take my car and my family. You'll see, because you'll be the one on the news, not me. Preachers shouldn't say that. Okay, whatever. Everybody's got an opinion about what preachers ought to say, and they say anything they want to. Let me tell you something. I'm born again. I love Jesus. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I pray in tongues every day. I'm full of the anointing of the power of God, and I can say things like that under the anointing because it's the truth. And people need to hear the truth. I'm telling you, the church has been fed candy. The church has been fed candy by candy preachers for too long. Amen. And I'm not raising a room full of candies. We're raising warriors for Jesus. And if I got to have a kid tell me amen, then y'all better get a clue. Because that's the purest amen you'll ever hear. Amen. I'm telling you folks, if you think we're not in it, you're blind to the fact of what's going on. That's why it's so important for you to strengthen your relationship with God and not back down. There is, listen, there is no more room for backing up. Amen. 
You know, I've seen people who weren't real mean get backed in a corner. And all of a sudden, they became a new animal. Right? I'll tell you what's happened. The devil overplayed his hand. And he's backed the bride of heaven into a corner. And what he don't understand is we're coming out swinging. And we're not taking no for an answer. Amen. You say, well, what's going to happen in the nation? I'll tell you what's going to happen in the nation. An outpouring from heaven is going to happen in the nation. A soul winning campaign like none of us have ever witnessed is going to happen in this nation. An outpouring of miracles is going to happen in this nation. Because not just a preacher in the pulpit, but the people that sit in the pew are going to understand they have the anointing of God in their life. And it's going to break out in the grocery stores. And it's going to break out in your workplace. And it's going to break out in the middle of town. Because God cannot be contained. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Normally I do an altar call right here for salvation. Not doing it. We're doing it at the end today. If you're watching online, do not miss the message. If you're sitting in the room and you don't know Jesus, pay close attention to the message. If you're in this room and you're on the fence, you better get off of it. I'm just telling you. I, 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 I feel like picking a fight with the devil today. And when I do that, I have to reach down and smack him. Because he's not on my back. Thank you. Exactly where he's at. Amen. Now I want to say this about a dear friend of mine. He's my pastor. And I love him with all my heart. And I've stood with him. And we'll continue to stand with him. But you better hear what I'm about to say. I know it's all over social media. And I know it's all over the news. That my pastor stormed the Capitol. I'm going to clear something up with you now if you wonder. He did not storm the Capitol. So if you've been diving into all the online garbage about my pastor. You can get out of the garbage can and know the truth. Listen to me. This is why it's so dangerous for people to jump on social media with all their opinions about stuff they know nothing about. I, listen, they've drug him into the court of public opinion and tried to prosecute him and terminate him. But you know what's going to happen? <laughs> He's going to come out stronger. Amen. Pastor Brian, I don't know if you're listening to this or will listen to it. I hope somebody writes it down so we can all remember it. But what the devil has tried to do to you is silence you. But God will exalt you with his right hand. And the power of God will be stronger in you now than it's ever been before. Years ago, God gave me a word for you and said you were a voice to the nations God has not changed his mind now your platform just got bigger overnight the devil tried to destroy you with what he's doing but what's happening now is God's putting you on the platform he has designed for you so now your voice will get louder it'll go farther around the world now than ever before and more people will come into the kingdom of God because of the platform you have now in the next five years than all your years of ministry combined. You'll see more people born again in the next five years than all the years combined. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.
Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus Most High. We love you, Lord. And I expect great things to come from heaven into the lives of the people in this room, the lives of those people watching online. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you can stand to sit down, go ahead and check out these announcements. Hey everyone, if you have recently made a decision to follow Christ, then we want to congratulate you. So now what do you do? We'd love to help you take the next step of your journey. So please text the word DECISION to the number on the bottom of the screen so that we can stay in touch with you. We believe it doesn't matter where you've been in life, but only where you're going. Our vision and our hope for you is to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, so that you can go and make a difference. As we enter into the message portion of this service, we ask that you extend the courtesy of quiet to those who are around you. We believe God has something specific that He wants to say to you. Our hope is that you leave here encouraged and closer to Him than ever before. Now let's get ready to enjoy and receive God's Word. if you want to receive or not. You're like, mm, I don't know. Maybe not. Man, I just, when I sat down, a thought come to my mind. Uh, you see uh, documentaries and things of like World War II and different places. When they would, when the troops would start going out to battle, they would start handing them ammunition. They weren't handing them magazines that were empty. Because they know they're going to be in a fight. It's a war. Yes or no? <laughs> they know they're going to be in a scrape before this is over. Honestly, I feel like that's what we do here. We're handing you ammunition every time you come in here for you to use when you... Listen, if you, do, if you come in here and you're getting full of the word and you're going out and not using it, why are you here? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Continuous Springs is the title today. Now, I'll just tell you, I know this from 20 years of preaching. Not everybody that sits in church is serious about God. A lot of people that sit in church are serious about being seen. You say, are you talking to me? I don't know, am I? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, if the shoe fits, tie it tight. Look, we don't, we, all of us that are in ministry, we don't do what we do to have something to do. Because I can tell you, and everybody that's in this room that's in ministry will tell you this there's a price. And it ain't always fun. Let me ask you this. Do you think Pastor Brian's having fun with an entire nation coming after him? That's not fun. But when you're called, when you're, when you're anointed, you're not in it for fun. Now, I have a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I pretty much can have fun anywhere. But the reality is this, when you're in ministry or when you're serving God, and here's the thing, we're all in ministry. Do you understand the type of ministry I'm talking about? 
you're going to get dirt under your fingernails. You're going to have scars. You're going to get kicked. But guess what? We kick back. But look, we're not the world's doormat. Amen. Now, some people don't like this kind of preaching. That's okay. Go find a candy preacher somewhere and eat some candy. I'm telling you, most of the church today couldn't handle the men of old. <laughs> if the Apostle Paul walked in here and opened up a letter and started reading it, people would run like roaches when the light come on. Right? I mean, you take some of these old preachers that I've listened to for years. Man, I mean, they're... Maybe that's why I'm a little rough sometimes. You know, I'm glad my dad was rough with me sometimes. I'm, I'm glad my dad every once in a while would kind of lower them eyebrows. Well, I knew that was bad. He, he'd lower those eyebrows a little bit, and I thought, boy, it's on its way. And then he'd point that finger, it looked like it was that long, and he'd start telling me something. And I'm paying close attention because I know this is a serious, con like this is no joke. I better pay attention because something's fixing to come to me that's going to help me stay out of his way. <laughs> right? Come on, how many of you had a dad like that? My dad had, my dad was, a lot of people probably wouldn't know this. My dad was very tender, but he was very strong. And I'm so ever grateful that I had an earthly dad that way because it really gave me a good picture of the heavenly father I have who's very tender yet very strong amen continuous springs uh, let's put up Luke 10 19 because I want to kind of start back into what we were in last week because I want you to really you really need to understand this but not in your head so much it, it needs to be in here you need to understand in your heart, in your spirit, who you really are. Jesus is talking here. He said, look, that's kind of West Kentucky, right? Because when we start talking and going to tell somebody something, we're like, hey, look, I do it all the time. I, I catch myself doing it all the time. And, you know, I can't hide me. I go anywhere, people know I'm not from there. If I sat quietly, they would never know, but as soon as I open my mouth, they're like, where are you from? We were just up in West Virginia, and, they, and we're all four sitting there eating uh, lunch, and the, and the lady that ran the place come out, and she said, y'all talk funny. I said, we don't talk funny. Everybody here talks funny. <laughs> she just laughed, walked off. <laughs> Look, I have get. It, how many of you know if I'm having a conversation with you and I say, "Look," kind of that like adds a degree of seriousness to what we're saying, right? That's kind of how we communicate. Look, I have given you authority. Let me ask you this, over how much power of the enemy? Let me ask you this, do you believe that? Well, you know, preacher, the devil's just got me down. Let's read it again. Jesus said, look, I have given you authority over how much power of the enemy? Do you believe it? Okay, like it. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Now for those of you who are visiting who maybe think we handle snakes, you've heard the rumor. It is a rumor, it is a lie, it is not true. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm telling you right now, a long time ago, if I'd have come to this church and they'd have broke a snake out, I'd have cut its head off and ran. Amen. 
It's a type of the enemy, type of demon, snakes and scorpions. It's representing hellish things. And crush them. Nothing will injure you. How many of you know the enemy has a plan to injure you? It's obvious. If he's saying we have authority to walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them and nothing will injure you, then it's obvious to see in that passage that it's a plan of the enemy to injure you. He hates you. Your enemy hates you. And he causes all kinds of craziness to go on in people to stir the hate. Your enemy hates you. He wants to destroy you. He hates your family. He hates your kids. He hates the fact that you got up this morning and came to church. John 10, 10, please. You say, well, we read this scripture a lot here. I wonder sometimes if it's enough. The thief's purpose, and we're talking about the same enemy here. His purpose, his sole purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. That's his sole purpose. That's it. Jesus said, my purpose, his sole purpose, Jesus Christ's sole purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Praise the Lord. First John 3, 8 through 10, please. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. So that, preacher, how could you say that? That's what John said. Apparently it was inspired and given to him by the Holy Spirit. See, you can't talk, people don't want you to talk about sin in church anymore because they want to keep living like hell. I love it. I love to sit in a, in a service where they're talking about sin and coming against it. I love it. Because I'm like, if it exposes anything in me that shouldn't be there, today's the day it goes away. But when people keep on sinning, Notice that really dictates what your lifestyle is. No amens? Any old me's? But when people keep on sinning, it shows, in other words, it's the proof, it's the fruit, yeah, that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning, but the Son of God, Jesus, that's His name. His name is not Muhammad. His name is not Buddha. His name is Jesus. There is no name greater than His name. Amen. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. In other words, it's not your lifestyle anymore. I'm not going to leave here today and go drink a fifth of bourbon. There was a day... When it was nothing for me to drink a fifth of bourbon every day. But I'm not leaving here today to go drink a fifth of bourbon. You know why? Because I didn't keep on sinning. So do you ever sin? I didn't say I didn't ever sin. But I'm not going to go back to the place I used to be because I have power over that place now. Don't fall for the lie that you're never going to get free from what you're bound in. Well, you know, once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. Lie! It's a lie. Once you're a meth head, you're always not. Lie! Once you've done sexual sin, you'll always not. Lie! It's a lie! 
So you're saying the power of God is less than an addict. They don't make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. How, how is God's life in them? By the Holy Spirit. So they can't keep on sinning. Because they are children of God. I think people just need to understand they're children of God. You can't keep on sinning because you're a child of God. Well, you know, I just can't break this. No, you can break it. Choose to break it and get on with life. Amen. Amen. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. Stout. Coming from the guy who didn't run out on Jesus. Coming from the guy that tried to boil in oil and couldn't kill him. Coming from the guy who was exiled in a cave and Jesus showed up in the cave and gave him the book that we call Revelation. He gave him one revelation of who he was and what was to come and it took, it took a whole book to fit it. I'm telling you, God is no joke. Amen. They can get on TV they can rail and scream and yell about how God is not real and how they're going to get him out of everything. They're not getting him out of everything. They can't take the one out that created everything. Amen. What do they want? They want a one world religion. But you know what I know? I'm, look, I'm no end time prophet. I, I, don't know, I don't know all the ins and outs of all the end time, but this is the one thing I do know. The Antichrist ain't going to set up his throne until the church is gone. The one thing standing between the Antichrist rule on this earth is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why you can stand up tall, square your shoulders back, and run right through the middle of everything the devil has to offer, stomping all over him the whole time. They can get on TV and try to feed you some line of garbage they, all they want. The best thing for you to do is turn the TV off. Is it a sin to have a TV? I never said that, so don't read into what I'm saying. There's people read into stuff I say all the time. Then they post it, and then people that don't know me jump on it. Just come ask me. I'll tell you. I have nothing to hide. If you want to know what I think about something, ask. I'll be glad to tell you. I mean, I won't even think. I'll be like, yep, there it is. You really think that? You ask. Well, that offends me. It's not my fault it offends you. You're the one that asked. You gave me permission to offend you. Now, how smart is that? You just gave me permission to offend you. And the word says, if you love the word, you won't be offended. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We're going to have to get you on the front row, Tracy. <laughs> John 7. You say, well, how do, well, what do we do? Well, you need to understand the power of God. That the power of God is in you, the power of God is on you, and the power of God works through you. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted, Yes! I don't think preachers should be loud. Well, I have a verse for that. I have a verse for that. Jesus Shouted. Praise the Lord. Not whispered. <laughs> he shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare 
Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. And he's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. There's all kinds of churches that say the Holy Spirit power is not real. And you can't go to a church where they talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, okay, stay in the mortuary then. Show me a church where they talk against the power of the Holy Spirit and I will show you a morgue. You shouldn't say that. No, I said it. It's recorded. You can watch it again. It's the, How can anybody call themselves men and women of God and then talk against God's Spirit? I mean, careful how you speak. Let's look at that in the Amplified. Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, look, this is another version, and he cried in a loud voice. Man, I can back this up six ways the next Sunday. <laughs> if you're watching online and you attend a church where they whisper, you might need to ask the pastor, listen, you say you want to be like Jesus, he shouted. He cried with a loud voice. I think you need to turn it up a notch, preacher. If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from the innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the Spirit, whom those who believed, trusted, had faith in him, were afterward to receive. So the believers on the earth then were going to receive what was coming later. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified, raised to honor. How many of you in this room have had the great privilege of drinking from a fresh spring? I'm not talking about go to the store and get a bottle of spring water. I'm talking about knelt down on the ground and dip water up in your hand out of a fresh spring and drink it down. Then you understand how fresh that, and it's continually fresh coming out of that ground. It's the most amazing thing. I can't pass one up. If I, if I walk by one out hunting and it's popping out of the ground, I'm, down, I'm drinking. I can't pass it up because it's so good. I mean, it's wonderful. And it's cool coming out of the ground. And it's fresh all the time. This is what Jesus is saying. Continuously, springs of living water will come out of you. In other words, you'll be fresh all the time. You'll be fresh to the society you're in. And you'll be giving life to people you're around. Amen. Man, I tell you, I feel like in my spirit, there are people in this room right now. You're looking at me and you're thinking, dude... You have no clue how beat up on the inside I am. You have no idea what I'm going through. You're correct. Probably don't. But I believe the Lord wouldn't have had me just say that if he don't have a clue. I'm telling you, God knows what you're going through. And we just read where Jesus said, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, that continuously springs will be coming up out of you that are refreshing to others. Here's the problem in a lot of, the, in a lot of people's lives. They've let a dam be built over that spring. But today, if you choose to, if you are willing to, if you're brave enough to, to step out and operate by faith, that dam will be busted by the Holy Spirit and those rivers of living water will begin to flow again and you'll become refreshing to those around you. You know the Mississippi River and, and the Cumberland River, all these things, you, you can go to the Cumberland River where it starts and step across it. It starts with a spring. Now if you've ever been around the Cumberland River, I mean it's not real wide now, but 
How many of you know it's wider than stepping over it? And I'm going to tell you right now, on these old guys that I grew up around, when, when it's high water time, that river there can get swoofed. That's what he'd say. I laughed when I was a kid when I heard it, just like you just did. He said, whoo, she swoofed. You ain't lying. <laughs> I guess swoofed is way more than swift. <clears throat> I, you know, it sounds to me like it's a bad deal, right? But it's, a, it's continual. It's a continual flow. Started with a spring. See, that's the way the church ought to be. The church should be dry and crusty. The church should be a place of springs continually. See, spring, not just a spring, springs continually flowing, continually flowing. Not, not just going to town or to work and say, you know, service was pretty good yesterday. No, going to town or to work under the power of God knowing that God's going to tell you something that day to change somebody's life. Wouldn't it be something if you were sitting at work one day and you got a word from the Lord and you looked at somebody and said, you know, this, may, it, this could sound a little weird to you, but I really believe the Spirit of God told me that you got something going on inside you and the doctors can't figure it out, but God knows exactly what it is and it's sent to destroy you, but he told me if I'd lay hands on you, pray for you, it'll leave. Are you okay with me praying for you? Now see how non-weird that was? You see how non-weird that was? What do you think they're going to say? They're going to say yes. How would you have known it? Because they've been keeping it secret. See how non-weird that was? Let me show you how weird most people make it. What happened to them? Charlie Horse? What happened? Mm. You know, the Lord told me, it's like, I don't care what he said to you. You're weird. <laughs> How many of you know someone? Don't look around. Just don't even. <laughs> never mind. I'm not even asking. <laughs> I'm saying don't be that person. Just be normal. Amen. He said, well, are you being normal up here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm always loud. I sleep loud. I can't help it. Acts 2, 1 through 6. Now here's the power Jesus was talking about. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly... There was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. They were not all apostles in that room. And everyone... Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. I'm telling you, you show me a place or you show me anybody that operates under the power of the Holy Spirit and I'll show you a dinner bell for the unbeliever. They've got to see what's going on. Amen. Just like if you build a fire, people come to see it. Don't lie to me, men. You're sitting out there lying to me with a look on your face. I promise you, if I walked out of this room right now and you didn't know where I was going... And I went over in that other parking lot and I built a fire, which I can build a fire, by the way. Every man worth his salt would drive right across that road when they left to come stand by that fire. 
And they get out and say, boy, I tell you, preacher, you got a good fire going here. How come you come over here? Because I, I like to be around fire. I don't like being around cold people. I like being around people who are full of the fire of God. Amen. We heard a guy say years ago, he said, I'm telling you this, if you get on fire for God, people will come watch you burn. I want about a whole church. Well, I wonder if your unbelieving cousin would show up at church if everybody in here was on fire for God. If they were rolling people in in wheelchairs and they were leaving them here and going home fine. If they were rolling them in here on, on, in beds and they were about to die. You see, this has went on forever. And it was men who had no guts that stopped doing it. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Yeah, they were turning this place upside right for God. Amen. Now it goes on down. Peter tells them, hey, this is what you've heard about. Prophet, the prophet Joel prophesied about it and now it's happening. This is what you, and they were all filled, all of them. Every one of them. All of them. The Presbyterians, the Methodists, all of them. Whoever was in that room, now that was a little bit of a joke. Whoever was in that room, y'all are like, whoever was in that room was filled with the Holy Spirit and power. Whoever was in that room. And when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and power, rivers of living water began to flow out of them. And guess what? They changed the entire world as we know it. And it's still being changed today because of what happened in that room and because people weren't afraid to walk out and declare what had happened. See, I, I, I guarantee you this. Some of you have been in services here where it was awesome and people were getting healed and, think, and you didn't tell a soul because you were afraid of what they'd think about you. You know, it's funny how people, I don't know if, well, one person, I know one person that really tried to talk me out of living like hell. She's sitting on the front row. Nobody really had anything to say to me when I was raising hell and doing whatever I wanted and drinking as much as I could drink and, you know, do whatever. No, nobody really ever wanted to talk me out of it. It's funny how those same people wanted to talk me out of following God once I started following him. You know why? Because the devil wants to mock the church. So he'll use anybody. He'll use Christians to mock the church. He'll just use anybody he can get a voice with. You know, you start coming here, people are going to mock you. You know why? Because they don't know diddly squat about what goes on here. They want to sit outside and form their own opinion. Amen. Well, they can mock all they want. Because we're going to keep declaring the word of God. We're going to keep preaching the word of God. We're going to keep laying hands on people. We're going to keep seeing people filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to keep seeing people filled with the power of God. We're going to keep watching God do what God does. They can mock all they want. Get in line. Get in line with all the mockers. Run your mouth all you want. It isn't going to change nothing. In fact, it's only going to make it stronger here. And if you're sitting here this morning and you're guilty of the mocking, you can repent. We love you anyway. It don't make no difference to me. It don't matter to me. I'm called to this earth to preach the word of God, not try to pet mockers. Amen. They mock Jesus, they'll mock you. Wouldn't you rather go to a church where they're at least going to say something about it than a church that has no effect? Wouldn't you rather go to a gunfight with a loaded gun as to show up with one with nothing in it and just point it at the devil and hope it works? Wouldn't you rather have power to tell the devil, listen, you know who I am. We don't have to go through that. You know the power I pack. So you cannot get out from under my feet because that's where you belong. And continuous springs flow out of me to nourish those around me. I want to be the person who every time somebody gets around me, they're refreshed. 
Amen. I want to be that person. Why? Because God's given you that ability to refresh those around you. I'm telling you, church shouldn't be a place where people are sour, look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. Now, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and power. It'll knock the shyness out of you. It'll knock the addiction out of you. Amen. Listen, people who are under an unclean power, you know, they don't ever say they're going to go try to find drugs. I've never known one drug addict that said he's going to try to find drugs. No, they go find them. And they'll do whatever it takes. They'll steal from you. They'll lie to you. They'll take everything you own to get their drug. And when they've depleted you, they'll move to the next one. Why? They're under an unclean power. You're under the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm willing to do anything for the gospel. I'm not trying to live right. I live right. I'm not trying to preach the word. I preach the word. I'm not trying to bring life to you. I do it. Why? Because I'm full of the power of God and so are you. I'm not trying to live. You know, I'm just trying to live right. Trying to live right. I'm not trying to not drink. I don't. I'm not trying to not whore around. I don't. I'm not trying to be faithful to my wife. I am. Amen. I'm telling the church is going to have to stand up and be the church or the world and all of their cronies are going to walk right off into hell because the church sits silent, afraid of what somebody might think. People's opinion means zero to me. Because they didn't die for me. And they didn't die for you. And it's time the church gives less care to what people think about them and more care to what it takes to get this thing done. When we exercise the authority that we have been given... We're not trying to live right, we do it. We're not trying to not do drugs, we don't. The devil can't stop the power of God, he can just mock it. He stands and runs his little mouth, you know, you go to that church, don't you? Instead of you going, yeah. You ought to say, you dead gum right I go to that church. Yeah, I go to that church. Guess what else? I'm full of the Holy Spirit and power. Guess what else? It's not a rumor. I pray in tongues every day. Guess what else? It's not a rumor. I lay hands on people. They get well. Guess what else? It's not a rumor. We don't handle snakes. I tell you what you ought to do. You ought to load your happy self up in the car and drive on out there one Sunday or one Wednesday night and just see what God is doing. Instead of you letting the devil talk through you and mock the church, I'm, I'm being straight with you. You need to tell them exactly like I'm telling you. You know why? Because the devil will cow down then. Why, why in the world would Christians cow down to the devil? That sucker's defeated, man. All of his plans have been destroyed. And we're here to carry out the mission. Amen. I'm not cowing down to the devil. He's a lo- I don't cow down to losers. I mean, if you were in a boxing match and the guy you were fixing to box with had both hands tied behind his back, would you say, no, I don't think I can whip him? <laughs> if you did, there's something wrong with your brain. I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't care who it was. If they put me in a ring with them and had both hands tied behind their back, said, do you think you can whip him? Pretty sure it ain't going to last long, I'll just tell you. Because he's totally defenseless. The devil is totally defenseless against the children of God. All he can do is spew lies and get people to try to believe them. That's it. I wish I, I really don't wish I could, but if I could remember all the rumors that had been told about this church and me. I can sit here till midnight. At, yeah, at least. We'd have to take a break, eat a chicken leg, and come back. <laughs> I've heard people say this. See, this is how God mock. Now, th- this is not an offering speech, so don't get nervous. But this is how God mock. You know that church out there? All they care about is your money. You know, if you're going to join out there, you know what they do? 
They want to know how much you make. They want it written down on a form how much you make. Hey, let me tell you something. That's a lie. I hope every one of you are millionaires, but I don't have a clue. I don't know how much you make. If you ain't making enough, I want you to make more. That's it. So if you've heard that, you can refute that claim. And if you're watching online, that's been your claim. You're wrong. You're wrong. We don't have you fill a form out to tell us how much you make. But see, that's what happens when you start tithing. The devil mocks it. But you know what you've done when you start tithing? You've taken the control of your money away from the enemy. You've taken control of your money away from the government. You've taken control of your money away from the world system. And you put control of your financial blessing into the hands of God. Now, you can mock it. You cannot do it. And you can trust the government. You can trust the world order. And you can trust the devil with your finances. But I choose not to. I choose to trust God. I choose that I can live better with the windows of heaven open over my life while all the unbelieving, poverty-stricken, broke losers mock the power of God. And when they see you coming out of something that it looked like it was going to hold you down forever and you've got more than you know what to do with and everything you touch is blessed, they're going to come to you and ask, I want to know something. How can you do what you do? You don't make hardly anything, and I see you living like you make a million bucks a minute. Well, I'll tell you how I do it. I know you're probably one of them that's mocked me, but that's okay. I forgive you anyway. You ever had anybody come up to you and say, I forgive you? I'm like, for what? How about you tell me why you forgive me? Because I'm pretty much an equal opportunity offender. <laughs> if you don't want to tithe here, whatever. Enjoy poverty. Because that's what the Bible says you'll have. I'm not trying to raise money. Not, I'm not trying. Listen, because you tithe here doesn't mean I got this blazer. Or didn't get it. Amen. It ain't all about the money. I'm just... I'm just putting that out there because I want people to understand what goes on around here. Because every once in a while, I like to just dispel the lies of the enemy, just so people know. You know, I have a, I have a 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Boy, it's a hot rod. I have an 01 GMC Yukon. With 190,000 miles on it. I have a 94 Chevy pickup. The truck itself has got nearly 300,000 miles on it. My wife drives a Honda CRV with 130,000 on it. I'm just, I'm giving you a window into our life. So listen, if it was all about the money and that's all we cared about, I wouldn't be driving a Hyundai Elantra. And I wouldn't be driving an 01 Yukon with 190,000 miles. I drive them because I like them. I drive that Yukon because I like it. It's big. And if I got to move you out of the way, I can I don't drive it for a status symbol. People have thought that. Oh my gosh, he drive, you're driving a Yukon. I'm like, yeah, look at the odometer. I gave less than four grand for it. I got a deal. 
Quit your complaining and find your own deal. You know how I got a deal? Because I'm blessed. I mean, that baby purrs like a kitten. Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you could stand some fresh oil? I want you to come down here. I want to pray for you. You say, man, I need a fresh oil. I need some springs. I need all that. Then come on down here. So, well, I thought we were supposed to stay away from each other. Well, whatever. You can do whatever little Fauci tells you. But Jesus said to not stay away from each other. Amen. Some of you won't come down here because of pride. Foolish move. Foolish move. You have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Can you pull the house lights down, please? Stay with Jesus. You say it's tough. Yeah, I know it's tough. Stay with Jesus. Because winners keep winning. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Him. Stay with Him. Don't back away. Don't back away from God. Stay with Him. Stay with Him. Be bold about your faith. Be bold about who God is in your life. Let that boldness of God rise up in you. When Peter declared what he declared on the day of Pentecost, just hours before, he was denying the one that died for him. He cowed down to a little girl and threw a cussing fit that he didn't even know Jesus. But something happened in that upper room and a boldness and a fire came into Peter's life. And Peter went from a guy who wasn't sure where he stood to a guy who now would declare to every unbeliever that Jesus is Lord, that the Holy Spirit brings power, and this is what you've heard about. I know it's been rough. Last year was rough. This year could be rough. But who's going to be who's going to be at the top of the deal? Believers who continually go to God and stay fresh. That's why praying in the Spirit is so powerful. Because you stay fresh. I'm telling you, there have been times in my life when I felt so crushed on the inside, and I would just sit and pray in the Spirit. Even when I didn't feel like it. I haven't always felt like walking up here preaching, but I do it. Because I'm called to do it. I'm born for this. This is what I'm born for. I'm born to plunder hell, to populate heaven. Amen. I believe the fire of God is going to come in your life, fresh and new. I believe that flame that's been dwindled is about to get a fan put to it. And if you're up here and you say, man, I'm not... I don't even know that I've ever been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, it's going to happen. Why? The Bible says when they laid hands on them, they were filled. They didn't go through some 30-minute speech about being filled. They just received. Some of you out there need to receive today the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to be down here. Put your stuff down and get down here and be filled with the power of of the Holy Spirit. You say, what kind of church service is it? This is the kind you ought to be in all the time. Amen. You say, well, what's going to happen when I get filled with the Spirit? You are going to receive power from God in heaven. 
you will pray in other languages and in other tongues. Well, I thought I needed an interpretation. <laughs> Not for your prayer language. There's, we have all kinds of teaching on that. Just go look it up. How many of you believe this? That when I lay my hands on you, fresh oil is going to come on your life. How many of you believe it? If you don't believe it, go sit back down. Because I'm not up here operating on the gift of faith. I'm up here joining my faith to yours. I operate in the gift of faith sometimes. But right now, I'm joining my faith with yours that you're saying, I believe I'm receiving fresh oil in my life today. That I'm going to have wisdom beyond anything I would know. That I'm going to be able to do things I didn't think I could ever do. That God's going to give me the ability to step out past what I could do on my own. And I'm going to do things so supernatural, nobody's going to understand how. They're going to want to know how I'm doing it. And I'm going to be able to tell them it's the power of God operating in my life. It's the fresh oil, man. I stay in touch with God. It's that fresh, fresh, fresh oil in the name of Jesus. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil in Jesus' name. Fresh oil in Jesus' name. Fresh oil in Jesus' name. devil's tried to mock you when you're alone. He's tried to mock you and tell you you lost your voice. But the Lord wants you to know today, you never lost your voice. You have a voice and that voice will be used to bring people to his kingdom. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil for the battle that you wage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Filled to the overflow. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fresh. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Lead him, Father. Lead him, Father. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh. Touch in the name of Jesus. A mighty woman of God. A mighty woman of God. A mighty woman of God. He gave you that color of hair to match the flame that will be on your head. The, it is red, honey. It's red like fire. It's because of the fire of God on your life. He gave you the color of your hair to remind you of that fire. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ most high. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now share it. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap. He's good. It's good to be in the house of God. To get refreshed. Fresh oil. Nothing like it. Have you ever tried to run a vehicle on old oil? You'll run it. It'll lock it up pretty quick. We all need that fresh oil in our life. Amen? Amen. Listen, this is our time of service where we get to worship God in our tithe and our offering. And so you can uh, do that by texting to give. You can do that uh, right here in person. There's envelopes in the seat back in front of you. 
and um, or you can go online, do that, uh, however you choose to do it. But as you leave, there's uh, buckets at each exit, and um, you can you can put your tithe and your offering in there. But um, I just want to take a moment to bless your giving today. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every tithe or every giver. I thank you, Father God, that your word says you want to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. And so, Father God, we just receive that today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you joined us online today, we want to tell you that we love you. We're so excited that you took some time to spend spend a little bit of time with us today. And we just want you to know that we believe that you're blessed and you're highly favored. And we'll see you again soon. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad that you tuned in. And we would love for you to join us here at any of our in-person services. For more information about us here at Life in Christ Church, check out our Facebook page or our website. We hope the rest of your day is blessed. And remember, it's not where you've been in life, only where you're going.